inside the shocking collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. What went wrong? The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank on Friday sent shockwaves throughout the tech industry and beyond, causing panic among startup founders and investors alike. Known for its startup lending and financial services, SVB was a vital resource for many fledging businesses looking to get their ideas off the ground. But what exactly went wrong, and just how did SVB become financially strapped and find itself on the verge of an implosion? We've detailed all of these and more in this video. So buckle up and let's get right into it. SVB's sudden downfall was a classic scenario of mismanagement and overextension. The bank had taken on too many risk loans and investments, causing its books to become unbalanced and leaving the bank dangerously exposed. When investors caught wind of these issues, they quickly pulled their money out of the bank, triggering a run that ultimately left SVP unable to pay its account holders. Now, the collapse of such a major institution is sure to have a ripple effect throughout the financial world, especially as many investors and businesses take drastic measures in the aftermath of the sudden loss of a trusted financial partner. SVP has now come under the control of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp, with the FDIC quickly stepping in within hours of the collapse and taking over control of all the bank's assets. According to SVP's last annual report, the bank had a staggering $173 billion in deposits at the time of its collapse. However, only $18 billion of that was insured by the FDIC, leaving the vast majority of account holders at risk of losing their savings. As it stands, only a fraction of account holders will be able to access their insured funds through a new entity starting on Monday, and those with more than $250,000 in the bank may face a longer wait to recoup their losses. This is especially as only the maximum FDIC insurance coverage is available to be paid back to account holders, making more dampening the possibility that some customers may not ever receive all their money back. Now let's take a step back and rewind to see just how all of SVP's problems that have now made it to daylight began. Silicon Valley Bank, or SVP for short, was a trailblazer in the banking world, disrupting the traditional banking model and creating a new paradigm for financial institutions. By focusing exclusively on tech startups, SVP was able to penetrate a market that was hugely ignored by other banks. This gave the bank a significant advantage over its competitors and enabled it to become the go-to bank for startups and venture capital firms. SVP's unconventional approach to lending and investing allowed it to work with high-risk startups that were overlooked by larger and more conservative banks. This gave the bank a reputation for being a risk taker endearing it to entrepreneurs looking for a partner that shared their vision and ambition. However, SVP's daring strategy also came with its share of challenges. The bank's heavy reliance on long-term bonds as a source of income made it vulnerable to fluctuations in interest rates. When the Federal Reserve began to raise interest rates, SVP's bond portfolio took a hit, leading to a massive loss in its balance sheet. Despite these setbacks, SVB continued to innovate and adapt, finding new ways to serve its clients and stay ahead of the curve. In fact, the bank's resilience and tenacity became the most endearing testament to its commitment to its clients and its unwavering belief in the power of technology and entrepreneurship. But this is where it gets even more interesting. So, SVB, Financial's holding company of SVB, hit rock bottom after its stock plummeted by 60% on Thursday. Now. This is coming after an ongoing crisis involving the company announcing a plan to raise $2.25 billion in stock to make up for its massive losses. However, SVP's financial troubles were not just tied to its loans to tech companies going bust, but also a series of other unforeseeable financial factors that have now led to its ultimate demise. But let's take it back a little further. You see, while the tech industry flourished, Silicon Valley Bank experienced an influx of deposits causing it to invest in long-term bonds to increase its return on assets. Unfortunately, this strategy backfired when interest rates dropped to historic lows. Investors had to lock up their funds for longer to earn substantial returns. However, when the Federal Reserve began to hike interest rates late year relentlessly, it had two impacts on Silicon Valley's bank business. Firstly, deposit growth slowed down as tech companies were no longer raising enough money. Secondly, 
long-term bonds became less valuable since investors could get similar or higher yields on securities that would mature much faster. Silicon Valley's bank had to sell these loans at a massive loss to cover the fleeing depositors' hole, resulting in a $1.8 billion loss when it sold $21 billion worth of securities. Unfortunately, instead of assuaging depositors, this move led to a bank run that ended with the bank's failure on Friday. Many notable venture capital firms like Founders Fund, Katu Management and Union Square Ventures have urged their portfolio companies to withdraw their deposits from the bank, making the situation even much worse. SVB Financial's dramatic downfall is a financial story and one of the most prominent symbols of Silicon Valley's recession with venture capital funding. While SVB's major clients might have been primarily technology companies, this failure had significant implications beyond the tech industry. The bank's collapse has triggered a widespread financial crisis, with an increasing number of venture capital firms advising their portfolio companies to withdraw their deposits from the bank. SVP's failure is now raising questions about the role of financial institutions in supporting the tech industry's rapid growth. The bank was one of the most prominent players in the sector, and its sudden collapse has now exposed the limitations of relying on venture capital funding to fuel innovation. While the tech industry has long celebrated the virtues of disruption and risk-taking, this ongoing catastrophe has now become the greatest reminder of the dangers of taking on too much risk without proper safeguards. And as it stands, the tech industry and her investors are presently scrambling to access the fallout and determine the long-term implications of this catastrophic financial event. SVP's future has now come under severe scrutiny and questioning, especially as the industry is now grappling with the sobering reality of how even the most innovative and forward-thinking companies might not be immune to a financial disaster. While SVP's failure has clearly highlighted the importance of diversifying investments and keeping a close eye on interest rate fluctuations to avoid being caught off guard, some experts are already arguing that it's nothing more than a cautionary tale of the unpredictability of financial markets and the consequences of poor financial management. But what exactly is at stake with SVP's unexpected collapse? To start off, this is actually where the FDIC comes in. The FDIC is like a superhero of the financial world, swooping in to save the day when a bank is on the verge of collapse. Essentially, when a bank fails, the FDIC takes over in order to protect the hard-earned money of the depositors. You see, when the FDIC takes over failing banks like SVP, it must negate and navigate a complex web of regulations, laws and procedures. The agency must work with multiple stakeholders, including the bank's management, shareholders, creditors and depositors, to ensure a smooth and fair resolution. In the case of SVP, the FDIC had to carefully evaluate the bank's financial health to determine the best course of action. This involved analysing financial statements, loan portfolios and other data to clearly understand the bank's assets and liabilities. The agency's goal is to maintain public trust in the financial system and it does this by providing insurance that covers deposits up to $250,000. So when SVB was deemed to be in trouble, the FDIC didn't hesitate to take action. Firstly, it transferred all insured deposits from SVP to the newly created Deposit Insurance National Bank of Santa Clara. But the news wasn't all good for depositors. According to Bloomberg, over 90% of SVB's deposits were uninsured which implies that the vast majority of depositors were at risk of losing their money. For those with uninsured deposits, the situation is a bit more complicated. While the FDIC has promised to issue receivership certificates for the remaining amount of their uninsured deposits, there is no guarantee that depositors will be paid back in full. In fact, it's quite possible that they will only receive a fraction of what they're owed. This uncertainty is causing a lot of anxiety for SVB depositors, especially companies that rely on those funds to keep their business afloat. These businesses may not have the cash reserve necessary to continue operating without access to their policies. They may be forced to take out loans or seek other sources of funding in order to keep their businesses afloat in the short term. There is likewise the ugly possibility of some of these companies having to lay off of employees, cut back on production or even close their doors altogether. And as the FDIC sells off the assets of SVB, it will use the proceeds to pay back depositors. But this long and complicated process may take months or even years to complete. In the meantime, 
depositors are left in limbo, uncertain about the fate of their money. The payroll and benefits industry has been hit particularly hard, with companies such as Rippling and Flow Health struggling to pay their employees due to the bank's failure. The situation has left many employees facing uncertainty and hardship, with some even already resorting to borrowing money from friends and family to make ends meet and struggling with overdraft freeze and other financial penalties. The wider financial industry has also been affected, with other West Coast banks experiencing significant drop in share prices. This has led to fears that other banks may be at risk of collapse, sparking a broader crisis of confidence in the sector. And should this happen, the spiral effect could be a complete economic meltdown, and could be possibly worse than global financial crisis of 2008. But despite the challenges, there is likewise hope that the industry will recover. Companies are now exploring alternative banking options and working to find creative solutions to the challenges they face. While the road ahead may be rocky, there is a sense that the industry will ultimately emerge stronger and more resilient as a result of this crisis.